other organizers or panelists on the line. When you are ready to begin the presentation, press the Start Broadcast button on the GoToWebinar control panel to allow all attendees to hear you. This system will notify you once you begin your broadcast. The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Edward Seibert, and I work with Refinely. It may say my name as Ryan Tremblay on your screen, uh, but I promise that I'm not Ryan. I'm actually Edward. Uh, I want to thank you all for coming out to today's webinar. Uh, today, I'll be showing you how your website can be a great tool for selling real estate. Uh, we will be talking about some of the things you can do with your website, and uh, we'll also be talking about some of the things you shouldn't be doing with your website. Uh, we also have webinars on Thursdays that are all about the Refinely CRM. I highly recommend checking them out as well. Uh, and then before we get started, I just want to point out that we do have a repository of uh, of knowledge, uh, of helpful articles that address many of the questions you might have about our IDX websites, uh, as well as the CRM. Uh, and we also have some stuff about lead generation on there. So before we get to the meat of today's webinar, uh, take a moment, uh, take a little note here uh, to jot down this uh, URL, and that is support.refinely. Dot com and uh, it's important to note that there's no www in front of that you usually don't need the three w's before going to a website nowadays again that's support.refinely.com uh, and here you'll see that we have a pretty large knowledge base and it's also ever expanding we're also we're always adding articles to this knowledge base uh, you can also access the database from the support section in the back of your website. Uh, and there's also a support link in your CRM. Today, though, is all about your Refinely IDX website. We're going to show you how to access your site and how you can edit your content. Uh, we'll give you some tips and tricks for getting your site in front of potential home buyers, and then we'll have a uh, a sort of Q and A session where you can ask uh, if you have any more detailed questions. You can always uh, ask them, and I will do my best to answer. Um, so before we get into what your site can do for you, uh, let's take a minute to talk about some of the things that you might be tempted to do with your site, but you actually should avoid them. Uh, rule number one when it comes to your website is pretty simple, uh, and it's a rule that we'll be repeating over and over again, uh, and that is always use original content. Um, one of the worst things you can do is copy and paste content from another site, content uh, being anything on your web pages, usually referring to the text, um, but images are important here as well. Um, Make sure that you are allowed to use any images uh, that you use on your site. The best thing you can do is to go out and take pictures uh, yourself. And with cell phone cameras nowadays, it's pretty easy to get original content and as far as pictures um, on your website. Uh, another thing uh, that you should note about the website uh, is that your website is not an advertisement. Uh, it's actually more like the product. Um, if you treat your website like an advertisement, you're doing a disservice to your clients and you're really doing a disservice um, to yourself. People's uh, first instinct sometimes is to throw up a logo, their headshot, uh, put a bunch of branding everywhere on the website and make that the sort of overwhelming aspect of their home pages. Uh, one of the biggest requests I get is, hey, can you make my logo bigger? Can you put my picture with my logo? Um, you do want to brand your website to yourself, um, and it's totally understandable that you want branding on your site. When you are a realtor, you are your business. Um, but once again, you have to think of your website as a product uh, and not as an advertisement. Advertisements will get people to go into a restaurant. 
But once they get inside, they don't want to see more ads for the restaurant. They just want to eat. And it's the same way with your website. You've already marketed yourself enough to get them to your site. Uh, Once they're on your website, they're already on the hook. So you want to start feeding them real estate information because that is the most sure way to convert a visitor to a lead. Um, they're not going to convert because of a headshot or a logo. Um, they convert because they want to see more property information. Um, another thing that you should avoid is, uh, posting your email address, uh, on your site. Uh, it might sound counterintuitive. Of course you want them to contact you, but you actually want them to contact you either by registering to view property information or by clicking on the contact us section and filling out one of these contact forms. And here on your site, you probably aren't going to have multiple contact forms on one page. Uh, in fact, you really don't want to do that because it might uh, it might actually mess up the functionality of the contact forms. But this here is just a demo site and it's just to show you that you can have contact forms in multiple places. You could have them on any page of your site. Uh, and the main reason uh, that you want them to contact you through the contact forms is because that is how you're going to convert them to a lead. Uh, their information is captured and inserted right into your CRM. Um, if they call you, um, hey, that's great too, of course, because then you've got them right on the phone. Um, but if they contact you any other way, you're going to have to put in your information by hand. Um, whereas if they use the lead capture form, uh, the CRM will do all that work for you. And another um, thing about your email address on your site is that robots will crawl your website. Uh, And then next thing you know, you're going to end up with an inbox packed full of spam and other unsolicited emails. Uh, When that's not really what you want, you'd rather have leads. Um, So I'm going to go ahead and walk through some of the the functionality of the website as far as the IDX uh, feed and searches go. Here on this demo website, we've got a section here uh, for featured listings, and you've probably got a section like this on your site. Uh, If you don't, let us know. Uh, You'll probably want us to put this up there. And with the featured listings, uh, you can display specific listings on your homepage. You can do it by inserting individual MLS numbers. Uh, You can do it by putting in an office ID and showing all of the listings for that particular office. Or what you'll probably be doing, what most agents do, is they'll put in their agent ID from the MLS. And then that way your personal listings are going to be the first thing uh, that's on your website. Your sellers are going to like that. And you're going to be getting a little extra marketing for your listings. Uh, For teams of agents, you can put in multiple agent IDs. You know, if you've got a team of four or five people or, you know, 20 people, 100 people, however many you want, um, you can put in multiple agent IDs to show multiple agents' listings. Uh, The next section that you're probably going to see is a new listings section. Um, Now, a lot of people see this new listings section and they say, hey, I only want to show you know, multi-million dollar listings or high-rise condos between 500000 and $2 million or something like that. Um, we actually recommend against that. Um, and the reason is something that the search engines call freshness. If you keep the most recent listings and only the most recent listings um, in this feed, the new listings feed, What's going to happen is that this feed is going to be updated multiple times a day, um, depending on how often your RETS feed updates. Um, and you know, say like you know, this first listing right here on the website is a lot um, out in Immokalee. It's probably not an area that most Southwest Florida agents, which is where Immokalee is, would service. Probably not a listing that they're interested in selling. Well, that's okay, because like I said, these listings update pretty quickly. This lot won't be on your site tomorrow, more likely than not. Um, The reason that you want it on the site now, though, is because when the search engines crawl your site, they're going to see that these are fresh listings, that these are the most recent listings. Um, If you set uh, your listings to only show 
listings within a certain price range, well, those listings might not be updated for days or weeks at a time. High price listings, you know, those listings might not change for months. And when the search engines crawl your site, you're actually going to get penalized um, compared to agents who do have the freshest listings on uh, the site. And of course, most buyers aren't going to come on the site and say, oh, these are the only four listings available, so I guess I'm not going to buy anything. You know, they're going to they're going to start searching. Uh, these little view all buttons here, like there's one next to the featured listings too. For featured listings, it will show all of the listings um, that apply to your featured listings. Uh, for new listings, it'll just show all of the listings, uh, you know, the newest listings first. Um, and what it is, it's, it's actually a property search. So I'll go ahead and click on this here, featured listings. And you see here, there's, it's an agency's listings. There's 126 listings. Um, but this is actually a property search. People can start to refine and alter, uh, the search. Uh, see here, we'll put in. You know, minimum of three bedrooms and you know so they can start changing the searches um, with the featured listings the searches are all going to be within you know those specific listings but with the new listings it's a complete um, you know property search the entire MLS uh, so so it's they're essentially by clicking on view all they're it's they're literally just going to the property search page uh, the next section that you might see on your website is foreclosed listings. Uh, foreclosures, not as big of a thing as they were a couple years ago. Some people don't like to have the foreclosed listings on their, their page. Some people do. Um, the search engines you know, like you having this information. Uh, it's not going to be a, a big hit if you take that off, though. So some people like to take the foreclosed listings. And you can actually, right here, it's only showing four listings, but you can show more. You could show uh, you know, two rows, three rows, four rows of these listings. Uh, on this theme, it's showing four across. We've got some themes that only show three across. Uh, so you're usually going to want to set it to a number of listings that you know, will fill out the row to make it sort of look better to avoid any big patches of white space on your homepage. Um, so that's the, uh, the homepage IDX. And then, of course, you've got this search right up here. We've got two options for the homepage search. This is uh, one that a lot of agents have requested, so we put it on here with the drop-downs, bedrooms, bathrooms, and a price range. The other search that you might see, let's go ahead and pull up another uh, demo site here. So you'll see the difference between these three drop-downs, and then here on this site, there is a, uh, a search bar. Uh, no matter which theme you pick, you can have either the search bar or the drop-downs. Uh, with the search bar here, it says right here, type in any city, community, county, address, zip code, school, etc. So let's say we want to see properties in Estero, Florida. Start typing in Estero, and there you see it pops right up here, City Estero. If we wanted Estero High School, we could do that as well. Communities with the word Estero, streets with the word Estero. So once we click on that City Estero, What's going to happen is that it's going to take us to the property page. And then here we've got all of our search filters. You can set your search filters to be on the left-hand side, or you can set your search filters to be here up top. Um, and then, of course, you can go in and you can start making your, uh, uh, making your search query. Uh, if at any time you want to get rid of one of the... Uh, the search things like this is up to five bedrooms, but say you want to get rid of that, you can just click on the little X right there to remove that filter, and it will immediately update your search results. So, uh, so your clients can come on here and they can do a pretty detailed search. Um, if they want uh, a search that's a little more you know, detailed than this, uh, you know, hey, that's a pretty good lead. They really know what they want. Um, you know, you might want to uh, do more of a, a high touch. Uh, type of relationship with that lead, but these uh, search details here, they get pretty uh, pretty detailed. Usually it's, uh, it's enough to, for the clients to narrow it down to what they're looking for. Um, what they can do then is they can save the search. Now, um, on this window that I'm logged in here, I'm not registered, so you'll see exactly what happens when I click on save this search. They're going to get a lead capture form. 
once they sign in, they're going to stay signed in. They can make multiple searches, and when they save a search, it's actually going to start dripping properties to them. Um, so they can actually set themselves up on a property drip. You can go back in later on your CRM, and you can log in and edit their saved searches. You could delete a saved search. You could add more saved searches uh, right through your CRM. Uh, the process is uh, for doing the search is almost exactly identical as it is here on the IDX website. Uh, so they fill in their info, and uh, we keep it pretty simple. Just name, email address, and phone number. Some people uh, like to have these really, really long uh, uh, contact forms where they put in you know, a bunch of information. Uh, our philosophy is that's the sort of info that you can get once you call the client, once you're you know, communicating with them regularly. Um, for now, they're more likely to just fill out these you know, few short items. Uh, to create an account to register. Once they register, you're going to get a text message and you're going to get an email uh, right away uh, giving you their information. Uh, if you are on a team with distribution, then uh, that lead will be distributed to the next person in the rotation or it will be thrown into the, the sort of Shark Tank type of uh, type situation some people do. And that's, uh, you know, that's really more CRM type of stuff. Um, there are other ways that people are prompted to register uh, on the contact form here. Um, this is a lead capture to get that same info. And then they can also put in a little message here, uh, and that will be added to the, uh, the email that you receive uh, when you get the new lead. Um, and it'll be inserted into your CRM. Um, another way that people might uh, be prompted to register is if they click on the favorite because they want to you know favorite a property um you know they can't uh they can't favorite the property without registering because then the website won't know who they are the next time they visit the website um and then the uh the last way and the way that people usually uh register is through viewing property details um uh, you can set it up so that they can view property details all day long without registering, or you can set up a certain number of clicks, a uh, certain number of uh, properties that they can view. Like, these aren't the most fabulous properties here, are they? But uh, I'll just go ahead and see here. So this one, it looked like they could view one or two property detail pages uh, before the registration prompt appears asking them to register. Uh, and once again, you can uh, change how many uh, properties your clients are allowed to view before they're asked to register and convert to a lead. Um, now we've also got uh, we've got three types of searches. It's really all the same search, and the only difference is how the uh, properties are delivered to the client. Uh, the, the photo view gives a little bit more detail for each listing, a uh, slightly larger image. Uh, the gallery view here uh, is more of like a snapshot of the listings. And then we have the map view. And the map view has one extra bit of functionality that the other uh, searches don't have. So, And basically that is the polygon search. So let's say your lead really wants to search within a certain area in Bonita Springs. They want to be here on Hickory Island. Well, what they can do is click on the polygon search here, and it'll say draw a shape. They click that, they can go to the map, and then they can actually draw a shape right around the area where they want to search. And then as you see, all these other properties go away, and the only thing that will appear are the listings right here in their search area. And they can actually go and edit the uh, their search box. They can make it you know as detailed as they want. And as you zoom in closer here, you'll start to see the properties uh, appearing individually. Um, so they can actually save a search with a polygon um, and then they can even go back to, say, the gallery view and look at just those properties, maybe in a, a, you know, a way where they can compare the properties a little bit better than they can on the map view. Uh, so that's the only difference uh, between the map view and the other searches. 
Uh, we've also got some community pages uh, that include a property search, and we're going to touch on those in a little bit. Um, let's see. So you got your communities. Uh, so yeah, so that's the uh, the basic rundown of uh, your IDX search on your site. Um, these search filters here, you can actually go in and uh, and edit. Uh, which properties, what type of properties people can search for, and which search filters will appear on your site. Say for some instance, you for some reason you didn't want people to be able to search for a swimming pool, or that's kind of silly. Let's do something more realistic. Say uh, you didn't want people to be able to search for rentals. You know, you don't handle rentals, uh, and you don't want them on the site, so you don't want them to be able to search for rentals. Just um, you know, just residential properties, land and income properties. You can actually remove this filter and those properties won't be won't come up in the search results and they won't be able to click on it to uh, bring up those properties. You can also set which type of properties are shown by default but leave these checkboxes. So say you only want people to see residential properties as their search default. Um, whenever they search it'll just show residential but then if they wanted to search rentals, they could come and manually add rentals to the search or even remove residential and search only for rentals. Uh, so you can either give them the option or you can completely take it away. Uh, so these filters here are another way for you to customize your IDX. Um, so, um, so that's the IDX functionality. And uh, now I'm going to talk about some tips uh, for getting your websites discovered. Uh, the website really doesn't do anything for you unless people are using it. Uh, there's many ways to get leads from your website. Uh, if you already have the leads, you know, you set them up on a safe search, that's going to send them to the website. Uh, you know, that's really, you're doing all the work there. Um, but you can get leads from your website. The most direct way is through lead generation. Uh, and it's a paid service where finally offers lead generation. There's other services that provide leads. Uh, Trulia has lead generation. Zillow has lead generation. I'm sure you know all about that. Uh, those leads go directly into your CRM. Um, like I said, Refinely does have the leads where they get inserted right into your CRM. But if you have Trulia or Zillow, I think we uh, work with House Hunt as well. Just about any... Um, any lead generation program, we can set it up so those leads will go right into your CRM. You won't have to do double work. You won't have to man put, uh, manually input them into your CRM. Uh, another way to get leads is to drive traffic to your site through ad campaigns. Uh, just about every search engine has some sort of ad service, usually a pay-per-click pricing system. Unlike lead generation, it doesn't give you direct leads. Uh, what it does is it gets people to visit your website. Uh, they'll still need to convert. They'll need a reason to convert. Um, and that's why you want to have these property searches sort of front and center, uh, you know, get properties right in front of them because that's how uh, that's the quickest way for them to convert to a lead. Um, the last method to get people to your uh, to get leads from your site is through site content. By creating relevant and informative content on your site, you can get uh, what's known as an organic lead. Uh, those are leads that have discovered your site through search engines or social media um, without any sort of advertisement, uh, and then they register on your site. Organic leads tend to be higher quality leads, um, but they're not easy to get. Creating and sharing that sort of content to build up the authority to get organic leads can take months, it can take years. Uh, it's really an ongoing process. Um, the more times you put into it, the more dividends you'll get. Um, now we talk about content, um, I'm going to go ahead and remind everyone of rule number one. Uh, it should always be original. Duplicate content actually harms your site in the search engine. You lose that authority if they think that you've cribbed content from another site, and that's going to drive you down the list of results uh, uh, for any given search. Uh, and we're talking when we're talking about content um, more than anything. Content is the key to elevating your site in search engine result pages. Uh, we've given you the tools you need to add and manage your content. We've also given you access to a great little tool to help you optimize your content to get your pages discovered by search engine. Uh, 
Uh, content comes in two main types, uh, and they're known as pages and posts. Posts are also known as blog entries, and you'll see here on this demo, uh, we've got blog right up here in the menu. These menus, by the way, you can add anything that you want to these menus. Uh, by default, you're probably just going to have the link to your home page, a link to your property search, and a link to your contact page. But as you add blogs, as you add community pages, uh, any content that you can imagine, uh, you can go ahead and put all this stuff right in your menu. And we've got some some videos that walk you through step by step how to do that on support.refinely.com. Uh, but blogs. Uh, so here's an example of what a blog role might look like. There's only a few blogs on this uh, this website. Uh, by default, blogs are going to post in reverse chronological order. That's how they're going to display, uh, with the most recent post being displayed first. Um, a blog post should be something that's timely. Um, your site is going to archive them actually by month and year. A blog post is a great place to feature information about, say, your latest local listing or local real estate market reports, but blog posts don't necessarily have to be about real estate. Um, if you want to be seen as an expert in your community or the communities that you, uh, that you work, that you farm, uh, community events – uh, and things about the community make great topics for blog posts. You might review restaurants or other businesses. Any timely information that you think may be of interest to your clients. Here, this is all just uh, placeholder text. Uh, but we're just sort of showing that uh, you can style your text any way you want. You can add images. You can add links. Uh, it's a good idea to add links uh, to other places. Um, when you do add links, you want to make sure that you're sending them to a new window because you don't really want them to, to get off of your website. Uh, a lot of times when you click on a link, what will happen is that will, it'll open in a new tab. Uh, that way, once they're done with this content, they can just close that tab and, hey, they're still on your website. Um, for more static, timeless content, uh, that's when you're going to want to create pages. Um, pages, uh, it's content, it doesn't mean it can't ever change, but it's info that's not going to be updated too often. Your contact page, for example, is you know, info that's not going to change uh, unless, say, you move your office, get a different phone number for some reason. Uh, if you have an About Me page, you know, that info is probably not going to change. You might add things to it um, you know, as your, uh, your career progresses, but most of that content is going to be the same. And that's just fine for pages. They don't need to be timely. They don't necessarily need to be fresh. Um, posts will sort by date, uh, but pages are more structured. Uh, any given page can have a sub page, and you can even put them on the menu up here. Like there's the main page, and there's the sub page. Um, and you want to do that when you're organizing information under a common theme. Uh, say, for instance, you might have a main buyers page. Uh, then you're going to create sub pages with related information, maybe about mortgage lenders, moving companies, utilities, anything that home buyers might want that you don't want to put on the main buyers page. Maybe you don't want it to be too cluttered or have too much content. Um, Refinely also offers a special page type, uh, communities and subdivisions. Um, and there's an example of it here on this demo site. I'm going to click on communities, and you're going to see here a list of uh, communities. Um, a community page will feature information about a given community, and it's any information that you want to add to the page. Um, on this one here, once again, we've got dummy text, but you see you can have a nice big image, information about the amenities, um, and then any more content you want. You can add more images, uh, more info about the amenities. Um, search engines uh, eat this stuff up. Clients eat this stuff up. Information about the community's clubhouse, about their golf courses, uh, anything that you want to add to the page. Community pages sort of are a combination of the best features of pages and posts. Um, because they're also timely. Along with the write-up you provide, 
a list of the active listings in that community is automatically generated. You never have to go in and edit this. This will always be updated to the most recent listings in the community. There's a map feature where you can, you know, it automatically will zoom in on the community. You don't have to set this map so they can sort of move around different areas of the community to see, you know, where the, where the listings are. Um, and again, uh, those listings are automatically generated. Um, so that's one of the uh, many types of pages that you can have. Another neat thing about communities is that from when you're inputting the info about a community, you can give the community a type, and you can also tell the website where that community is by giving it a city. Uh, and then you can actually sort uh, by the city or by the community type. So let's see here, we wanna look at golf course communities. Well, you can just choose a type, golf course, and then, oops, I clicked too many times, sorry. And here it's only going to show the communities that you have marked as golf course communities. Um, you can do the same thing with, these are the communities marked as gated communities, which I think are the same ones. Uh, these are the communities marked as boating communities. Um, and you could assign what type of community is what. Say you could make a type that's new construction. Uh, any community that's still uh, building new homes, you could set as a new construction community. And then once the community is built out, all you have to do is go into the back end and remove the checkbox next to new construction. So you've still got it on your communities page, but it's no longer listed as a new construction community. And you can also do a combination of the two. So say we wanted a boating community in Estero. There we go. Now it's showing there's only one community on the list. Uh, you'll probably have more communities eventually. Um, on your site. This site only has six communities because again, this is just a demo site. But then this here, this community here is marked as a boating community in the city of Estero. Uh, you can also have subdivision pages. Uh, so if you click on this community, Coconut Point, you'll see that there are two subdivisions inside the community, Rapallo and the residences at Coconut Point. So whereas this, uh, this community page is just showing info on Coconut Point in general. You can actually make a subdivision page that focuses on that subdivision within Coconut Point. And you'll see here it's only going to show listings. This here is the residences. It's only going to show the listings for that particular subdivision within that community. Now, these focused community and subdivision pages are great for search engines. Uh, the more focused your content is, um, the higher it's going to rank for searches about that content. Uh, you know, if you have a website in Chicago, Illinois, and you want people to find your website just by searching for real estate in Chicago or Chicago homes for sale, well, you're going to have thousands of websites competing with you. But maybe there's not a bunch of websites with pages about the residences at Coconut Point. Uh, so people searching for the residences are more likely to stumble upon this page. Um, and then that's how they're going to get onto your site. And even right here on the page, we've got these listings, uh, which can act as lead captures by uh, someone favoriting them or by viewing multiple property details, that registration prompt uh, is going to come up. Uh, so the whole idea is getting these people who have a really um, focused idea of where they uh, are looking to buy real estate, for instance, here at the residence is a coconut point, getting them onto your website and getting them registered as leads. Um, so another way to get people in front of your website is through social media. Social media is really intricate. It's complicated. We could I mean, we could go on all day. Uh, so instead of trying to turn you into a social media guru, uh, today uh, we're just going to talk about how you can use social media to drive people to your site. Now, the temptation most people have is to turn your social media into an advertising platform. And in a way, that's exactly what you're doing. Uh, but social media is a non-traditional platform. So you're not going to want to treat it 
like a regular advertisement. What you're doing with social media is you're actually sharing your website and your website's content uh, on your social media profile. So you're sharing that content with the internet in general. Um, uh, not every post on your social media has to necessarily contain a link to your website. Um, but you definitely want to get links to your website on your social media profile. Uh, and the things that you're going to share are these community pages we were talking about. Uh, if you review a new restaurant that opened up and made a blog post about it, you're definitely going to want to share that on your social media. Um, uh, now, you know, mention that you work in real estate often without turning it into a commercial. It's sort of a, you know, it's a tricky uh line to to walk um but you want people to know that you are a realtor uh without thinking of your content as spammy uh you don't want them basically to hide your content uh you just want to get that reminder into the back of people's minds that you're a realtor uh that also really helps with referral business i know some agents who get a ton of referral business through facebook uh, the real key to social media, though, is engagement. Uh, when you share your content to Facebook or Twitter or wherever, uh, you want people to get involved. Ask questions, uh, encourage people to reply, to comment on your content. Um, post content uh, and encourage people to share it on their own pages. Search engines uh, monitor social media. And they see the things that people share, uh, like, favorite, otherwise talk about. Uh, and when that stuff is your content, uh, the search engines think that that content and thus your website must be important. The more people that interact with your content, the more important search engines think your website is. Uh, and this grows what's called authority with the search engines. And the more authority you have, the higher you're going to rank on the search engines. Um, don't worry too much about linking your social media profiles. Uh, you do want to link them. Um, you want to link to your Facebook business page or Twitter account. Um, but you're probably going to want to keep it maybe down in the footer of your website, uh, somewhere unobtrusive. You definitely want the search engines to see that link, uh, to see that they're connected. But you also don't want people leaving your website. You want to keep them on your website at least as long as they need to to convert into a lead. Um, and the very last thing I'm going to talk about on social media um, before we sort of go into a Q&A, um, and actually before we go into Q&A, I will show you a little bit around the back end of the site as well, of course. Um, but the last thing we're going to talk about with social media um, is Pinterest. Uh, if you don't have a Pinterest account, make one today. Um, people on the internet love to look at pictures and Pinterest has turned that into a multi-billion dollar business. So jump on that bandwagon, uh, setting up the Pinterest account only takes a couple minutes. Um, once you set Pinterest up, uh, it's pretty easy there. You can have a little, uh, bar, a little button in your toolbar. You click that, um, and you can post images right onto your Pinterest account. Uh, when you do post images, make sure that those images link back to your website. Post the images directly from your site. Um, don't just upload them from your computer to Pinterest. Uh, people will share those images every time you post a picture of a pretty sunset. You know, Make sure you put that on Pinterest. People will share that. People will repin it. People will favorite it. Uh, having no idea that it has anything to do with a real estate website, but that's okay. Uh, what you're looking for is that search engine authority. Uh, the search engines see all that content shared on Pinterest, and the search engines think people care about your website. Therefore, they're going to put your website higher up on the search engine results uh, to get more people to see your website. Um, the people who repin your images may actually never get to your website, but again, that's okay. It's the search engines that you are more interested in impressing. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and show you how to get to the back end of your website. Uh, it's pretty simple from your home page or really from any page on the website, all the way down at the bottom of your page in the footer, there is a link that says site administration. So you just click on that, and it's going to take you to the login page if you're not already logged in. 
So I'm going to go ahead and log in here. It might ask you to do a little bit of math to make sure that you are not a robot or not the wrong person trying to hack into your site. It's just a little bit of extra security. Uh, so this is the back end of your website. It's not quite as impressive as the front end, but it's where you're going to manage all of your content. Uh, I do want to draw your attention to this section that you should see on your dashboard in yellow. Uh, if you don't see this when you log in, let us know and we will set it up for you. Um, this is a list of the latest Refinely site features. Every time we add a new feature to your website, we're going to post about it here. Um, and then all you have to do is click on that, and a new tab will open up that will take you right to the Refinely blog, um, where we will have some helpful videos or how-to articles on how to use the new feature. Here there's a, a, a video that will walk you through um, optimizing your content for the search engines. I highly suggest you watch this video uh, when you get a chance. It's only about 15 minutes long uh, and it will really help you uh, get those web pages uh, optimized so that the search engines will relate your web page with the content that you want it to be related to. Um, so here's the the main dashboard. It should look like this. Uh, there's a quick draft section here. And that is uh, if you want to write a blog post, but you don't have time to write a blog post. You can, but you have an idea for what you want to write. Um, say, like, you know, there's a uh, uh, comic book convention coming to town. Uh, maybe you want to write a, a blog post about that for, for your more nerdy clients like me. Um, so you can book that in as the title. Uh, you can put in any info that you want to put in right here. Uh, and then you can click on Save Draft. And now the next time you log in, you're going to see these drafts right here. And you can click right on that, and it's going to take you right to your blog post editor. You can then uh, fill out that content uh, and set it up to publish. Um, another way to get to your blog posts is to click right here on Posts, and it's going to show you a list of all your blog posts and all of your draft blog posts. Um, if you want to edit your pages, you click right here on pages and it shows you a list of all of your pages and then you can just click right on the page to edit the page. Um, community pages, you click right on, right on where it says all communities and here is a list of all your communities. You can edit them, you can add new communities. Uh, the page editor slash blog post editor slash community page editor uh, really all work the same. So here I'm going to open up this draft just by clicking on the title on the home page. Here's that uh, dummy text that we entered earlier. Uh, you can then elaborate on that text. Uh, you can add media. You can add images. Uh, you can even add listings right into your blog post. Say you're writing a blog post about a specific community. You can click on this little button here, and a little window will pop up where you can say, I want to put in listings from the Coconut Point community. So you just choose community, Coconut Point. You could add more filters here too, price range, bedrooms, bathroom, floors, uh, year built, uh, building design, property types, all kinds of stuff. Uh, click on insert listings, and it's going to insert a little snippet of code. Um, and then when you actually publish the page, it's going to look like this. It's actually going to put in those listings right into your blog post. Uh, and again, the great thing about this is that you know, in two weeks when someone visits your blog post, if that list, if those listings have changed, they probably will. There'll be new listings, things will go off the market, price changes, that sort of thing. Um, those listings are automatically updated. So even in your older blog post, you'll never have to go in and update those, um, those listings. The other thing that you can do is say you have a listing. I'm going to steal an MLS number here. I'm just going to copy that MLS number. But say you have your own listing that you want to write a blog post about. Um, we've got a little button here where you can insert a single property. Click right there. And then all you have to do is paste that MLS number and click insert listing. Now, that blog post is going to have 
that all of your listing information, property description, uh, stuff from the MLS, photos, all that good stuff. People can request a showing. That's going to open up a lead capture. Um, contact the agent if they want to favorite the property. All that stuff is going to be a great way to um, to capture leads and advertise your listings. So uh, you know you're killing two birds with one stone. Now. Um, this may be a little daunting at first. There is uh, a lot here to take in. There's a whole lot of info here. All these buttons, categories, what does all this stuff mean? Featured images. Uh, you can actually schedule your post to publish in the future. Say you've got a, a sick day and you're just sitting at home bored. Uh, you could actually write five or six blog posts, and you can set them to publish in the future. So for the next month and a half, you don't have to worry about blogging. You've got it taken care of these posts will automatically publish on the date and time that you tell them to publish. Um, now, all of this stuff can be, like I said, pretty daunting. It's a lot to look at. On support.refinely.com, and again, I want to show you here, up at the very top, there's a button here that says support. And if you click on that, support.refinely.com, by clicking on browse help articles, here you see all of this stuff. We've got stuff on editing a blog post, show you exactly how to do it. We go through each and every one of these buttons on the blog post editor showing you what they do, how to insert links, how to remove links, how to insert property details, how to format the text, um, how to publish it, all that good stuff. We've got right here on our um, on our uh uh, knowledge base. Uh, if you're trying to figure out how to do something and the knowledge base isn't helping you, there's two options that you can do. Um, right up here, it says click here to chat. And it's going to ask you to type in your name. And it's going to ask you to type in your email. And then you can click here to start chatting. And if you click on that, you can type in your question. Hey, pal, my website doesn't work. And what's going to happen is we're going to get a little window here. Here's here's a here's what it's going to look like for us. Uh, so we'll our chat client will open up and we'll be able to chat with you right here live on your website. Uh, if we're not around. Uh, you can, from the support uh, support window here, you can actually enter a support ticket. You just type in your email address. Uh, you know, here's what the ticket is about. Uh, my listings aren't showing up on my website. And then um, put in you know your question. Uh, any details that you can give us will help. You can attach screenshots, that sort of thing. That is... Uh, and then once you hit submit, that is going to send us a support ticket. That's usually the fastest way to get a hold of us if you have a problem. Um, uh, you, you know, if you just try and contact me, or if you try and contact someone else here at Refinely, uh, you know, we might be not be sitting in front of our emails. But if you put in a support ticket, someone's going to see it quicker. Um, so these support tickets are the fastest way. Also, from the knowledge base, there's a little button here to enter a new support ticket. So you click on that, and really it's the same thing. Your email, the subject, the description. You can attach um, a screenshot if you like, um, or any you know any file. Uh, so that's our uh, support system. Uh, we're always there for you. Uh, like I said, if we're not uh, if we're not in the office, we can uh, you know send us a support ticket, and we will get back to you as soon as possible, uh, and we will try and help you out and fix whatever problems you have. Uh, so, uh, from here on the dashboard, I'm going to go ahead and just trash this blog post here. It's a fake blog post. All right. So from the dashboard, like I said, you can access, you can edit your blog posts, you can edit your pages, you can add images, um, to your media library. You can even add, uh, audio files, um, you've got, uh, a slider where you can actually edit, um, the images that are that show up in uh, on your homepage, uh, you know, by default, there's going to be a background image right here. Uh, you can add multiple images to that. Um, they won't actually physically slide back and forth, but what will happen is that every time someone visits the page, a random 
image from your slider will pop up. Uh, and the reason we don't have them move, even though it looks pretty cool, uh, is because it looks pretty cool. And when you have something like that, uh, it's going to distract people and they're just going to sort of sit there and watch the pictures. You don't want them doing that. You want them searching. You want them converting to leads. So you want your website to look nifty. Uh, you want it to look sharp and professional without it being you know, distracting. You don't want to have a lot of moving images. You don't want to have like videos and stuff like that uh, because that's just delaying the time that people are going to start searching for properties. Um, you've got your refinely settings here as well. Uh, and this is where you can go in and you can edit those search filters. Um, like for instance, you know, here on this website, we're not showing commercial properties. We're not showing boat docks. I don't even think we're parsing the boat docks. Nobody's really asked for that data. <laughs> um, uh, most of these settings, though, you're probably not going to want to play with, uh, these general settings here, um, most of these you don't want to play with, but I do want to show you um, one thing, uh, two things actually. One is your default sort. Right here, this is default sort set to ID, uh, and that's not what we want. You want your default sort set to days on market newest. Uh, yes, we have options to sort the properties in different ways, but this is really what you want. Days on market newest. That's going to be the freshest data, the most recent data, and that's what people want. And it's also going to help your search engine rankings. Highly recommend you keep it on days on market newest. Um, your site should be set to that uh, by default. Uh, if it's not, though, this is where you would go to edit it under Refinely Settings. Um, the other thing that you'll want to click on here, and it's sort of a wordy title, uh, we really should uh, rename this here. It says Limit for Viewing Details Listings. Should be Listing Details. Um, we've got it set to three here. And this is where you can set the number of property details people can view before the registration prompt comes up. Uh, you can set it as low as one. Uh, if you set it at zero, what you're actually doing is disabling it altogether, and people can look at properties all day long. Um, but again, then you know, you're never going to prompt them to register as a lead um, unless they actually go and try and save a search or favorite properties. So you might want to, you know, set it anywhere between three and five is usually a pretty good number uh, where they're comfortable looking at property details on the site. Um, uh, and you know they're going to want to see more. If you do it after just one, that might be a little too soon. Um, you know, it might sort of make them say, "Oh, forget this. I'm going to another website." Um, this default source parameter here. Uh, don't edit that. Uh, that is for the CRM. Um, conversion tracking JS snippet. If you are using Google Analytics uh, and you want to track uh, where and when people convert to leads on your site, this is where you're going to put that. Um, theme design here, uh, this is where your search filters go. By default, they go on top, or you can set it to be on the left. And we've actually found uh, most people tend to set it on the left. So we're actually setting that as the default now instead of putting them up on top. But if you choose default, the, ser uh, the search filters will be on top. Uh, and then you click on update settings and boom, all your options have been updated. Uh, this very first refinely settings where it says API, don't mess with that. Um, that is how your website is interacting with the IDX. So you do not want to remove that number there. Um, company information is stuff that's going to be put in automatically. Um, the map settings. Now this is something that you might want to change if you focus on a certain area. This is the default map view for your map search page. Uh, if you really focus on Bonita Springs, for instance, you might want to zoom in on Bonita Springs uh, or Naples or uh, Cleveland or wherever it is that you are uh, that you are focusing uh, your business. Um, so that's a setting that you might want to alter. By default, we sort of get in um, over where your office is, where the main uh, your main real estate area is, but you might want to go in there and, and refine that further. Uh, I'll click on update settings. That's about where we were before. And there, as you see, the options are updated. Uh, and then the very last thing I want to show you back in the back end here is the appearance. Um, 
there are two sections here under appearance. There's the customized thing and there's the menus. I'll show you the menus first. Um, and again, we've got more detailed videos on our knowledge base. But this uh, menu here is where you can actually edit what appears on your menu. Um, say for instance here, we've got the photo page, the gallery page, and the map page. These are different pages uh, that show search results here on the menu. Um, and if you look at the home page, you'll see them right here, photo, gallery, map. And they sort of stay, they stay in the same order that you have them here. Um, now that's a lot of space there for the property search links. You might want to condense that and make it, make it smaller. Well, you can edit these menus. You can actually add custom links to any page on your website or really any page anywhere else. Um, and you can also edit how these pages appear. Um, so for instance, I am going to put another link to the gallery page. Now I just went to search, search for gallery, and there it is. Select it, and then I can add it to the menu. So when I click on add to menu, what's going to happen is that gallery page, now it's here at the bottom of the menu. I'm going to go ahead and take that and I'm going to move it up here under the home page. And then I'm going to take the title of that and I'm going to change it from gallery I click on this little arrow here and there you can see you can edit some of the attributes the, the label I'm going to change from gallery to property search but I'm going to spell it correctly there we go so I've changed it to say property search now these three pages here photo gallery and map this gallery page is actually the same page as the property search page but it's got a different label and that's okay what I'm going to do is I'm going to, you could just drag and drop these to move them around, right? Just click it, drag it, and move it. Well, I'm going to keep property search here under home, and I'm going to take photo gallery and map, and I'm going to grab them and pull them a little bit to the right. And you see they get nested underneath property search. So I'm going to do that with gallery. I'm going to do that with map. And then maybe I'll change the labels to make them a little more detailed. Photo view. And then we'll call this property gallery. So you know you can you can label these however you want. Map search there. And now I'm going to go down here, and you see a blue button. That's always to save the menu to to save whatever you're working on. If you're publishing a blog post, you're going to see a blue button that says publish. Uh, for the menus, you'll see the blue button that says save menu. So we'll click on that. And now let's check out the home page. Uh, I'm going to refresh this to reload the page. And now you see where it's a, instead of those three li links, we've got home, then it jumps right to property search. And when you hover over property search, those other menu items are now going to appear underneath it. So if you just click on property search, it's going to take you to the gallery view. Hey, that's great. They're searching. Everything's, you know, everything's wonderful. Um, but you know, you can click on these little tabs here to change your view, but maybe they want to jump from the home page directly to the map search, where they can hover over that and then choose map search. So as you can see, these uh, these uh, menus here, you can really edit them. You can even go in and set up, um, you know, search criteria. So here's we're searching for three bedroom duplexes. You know, it's this is random. But you can go ahead and copy this link and you can choose custom link and you can add that to the menu. Three bedroom duplexes. And of course you're not gonna you know, really add three bedroom duplexes, but you might want to show properties in a certain community or um, properties that uh, you know have certain criteria that you specialize in. But you can add that to the menu as well. Save the menu. We'll go back to the home page, and then under property search, you'll see three bedroom duplexes. And then when you click on that, hey, look. That's exactly what it's showing you, three bedroom duplexes. Um, so really, uh, the sky's the limit as to what you can add to these menus, how you organize the menus. Um, this uh, demo site here has got the community page. It's got an agent roster. Uh, unless you're working on a team, you're probably not going to use the agent roster. Uh, 
Um, it's also got the blog, like I showed you before, the contact page, and there's a neat little vendors uh, option here. So we'll click on the vendors, and then you can add, it's sort of just like the community pages. You can add vendor types. Here we've got plumbers, mortgage lenders, pool service, uh, anything that you want, you can add um, so that they can be sorted through. Uh, and hey, that might be a way to monetize your site. You know, you're actually getting people to advertise on your site. Uh, and you're also providing a, you know, a convenient service for your clients. And uh, see, as you click on the more info, you can put in a little write up, a link right to their website, their contact info. Um, so again, it's a, a thing that clients seem to like, and uh, we do have agents who are using it to to make a little advertising money. Uh, I know that there's at least one team that you know they're getting more money from advertising vendors than they are paying for uh, for their website every month. So their website's really already making them money in that way. Um, so I know I've oh wow, it's been an hour. I've thrown a lot of stuff at you guys in the last hour. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put a pin in it there as far as, uh, you know, new things to throw at you. Um, but if anyone has any questions, um, now's, uh, you know, the time to ask. Or, like I said, you can contact us through chat or through support tickets. Um, but if there's anything that you'd like me to, you know, to show you real quick while we're here on the webinar, uh, go ahead and ask away. Um, so, uh Let's see, while that's happening, I'm just thinking of anything. Oh, okay, we do have uh, a question. What's the best way to use, to use tags? The best way to use tags, uh, and I'm assuming you're talking about meta tags here, um, is to call up Dr. Brown, get in his time machine, and go back to the year 2002 when meta tags were important. <laughs> um, tags really aren't that important anymore, um, uh, and it's because they were really easy to abuse. Uh, it was really easy to fool the search engines into giving you a high ranking when you shouldn't. Uh, so instead of tags, uh, the best way now to optimize your page is uh, through the actual content of the page. And I'm going to go ahead and open up a blog post here and show you um, this tool. And this is that little video that I recommended that you watch. Um, again, this is just dummy text, so it's not a very good example. Um, but down here at the bottom of underneath your, your, where you put your content, there is a section called WordPress SEO by Yoast. And what you can do is you can actually choose a focused keyword. Um, uh, let's say homes for sale in the residences at Coconut Point. So you, you tell this plugin here, this is what I want my site, my blog post uh, to rank for. When people search for homes for sale in the residence at Coconut Point, I want my site to pop up. And then what it's going to do is it's going to help you rank for that particular focus keyword. Um, you see here the snippet preview. It actually shows you a preview of what it's going to look like when people click on your blog post. You can edit that right here where it says SEO title. You can actually make that your focus keyword. And then you'll see it's going to get, um, as you uh, update it, That snippet preview is going to update. Now it's the same as your focus keyword. Uh, right down here, um, this is the meta description, similar to what meta tags were before. Um, you can actually update here. Add any text you want, something punchy to get people to click on the link. Um, you should probably put your focus keyword in there somewhere as well. Um, and then what um, what it's going to do, you're going to see it's going to update there. But also, it's going to show you right here, focus keyword usage. And it's going to show you where your focus keyword is being used. See, it's not here in the article heading. That's this title right up here. Um, it's not being used in the URL. Um, if you make your title your focus keyword, it's going to automatically go into the URL. We don't even have it in the page content. You're going to want to put it in the content several times. Um, the really neat thing here is where it's going to show your SEO. Right here, right here it says eh, it's okay, but it's probably not going to rank. It's, it's just okay. You want better than okay. You want this little circle here to be green. 
that means it's good, you're ready to publish. Um, as you uh, look here on the WordPress SEO by Yoast plugin, you'll see three tabs. Uh, the second tab here, this page analysis, if you click on that, it will tell you exactly, here's the bad things about uh, about your blog post. These red things are bad, and it will sort of give you uh, tips on how to fix it. This orange, it's pretty bad too. Yellow is not too bad. Green, like these green things, these are the only good things about my blog post. You can see it's really not ranking very well. Uh, so this plugin here, if you just sort of follow the advice it gives you right in the plugin, uh, it will opt, it will help you optimize this content uh, so that your search engines will um, will notice the content. And once you start using this plugin, the really cool thing is that you will you'll sort of figure it out on your own. You're going to become an SEO pro without even realizing it because you're just going to be doing it by muscle memory. Um, you know, you're going to find yourself typing out these blog posts and then checking the, the SEO uh, options and you're going to see like, hey, everything's green. It's already a good post just because you've become so used to, to uh, doing it the right way. Um, and again, there is, um, if we go here on the dashboard, there is this use the SEO by Yoast plugin to optimize your content video. And then this here is about a 15 minute video that really walks you through how to use that uh, to get your content uh, really good for the search engines. Um, so that's really, that's, uh, you know, meta tags, like I said, it's, they were abused so readily, uh, so easily that the search engines really don't uh, even look at them at all anymore. You can have no meta tags at all, uh, and it won't hurt your search engine rankings in the slightest. Um, so uh, if no one has any more questions, I'm going to go ahead and uh, release you guys back out there into the uh, the real estate wilds. Um uh, like I said before, you know, we're here to help. If you have any questions, any concerns, um, you know, we want your website to be awesome. Uh, we want to be proud of these websites and we want you to be proud of them. Uh, and we want you to, uh, to use them to, to sell the heck out of real estate. Um, again, I want to, uh, I want to sort of give a, a shout out as it were to Ryan, um, on Thursday, he's going to have his CRM webinar, uh, and when you see how the CRM and the website work together um, and see how it's going to save you so much time and so much stress, uh, I think that's really when you're going to fall in love uh, with Refinely. Um, it's going to make your workflow so much easier. I, I really love our CRM. Uh, we're integrated with MailChimp and Infusionsoft, so, so you can send out mass emails. It's going to make uh, make it really easy for you to stay on top of your contacts. Um so uh, again, I want to thank everyone for uh, for coming out to the show today. Uh, uh, if you ever uh, have any problems, again, uh, support.refinely.com. You can put in a support ticket. You can browse our knowledge base, uh, and we will do our best to uh, to help you out in whatever you need. Um, so thanks for coming out, and everyone have a great rest of your day. <laughs>